Action. Hey, I'm Eric Thomas. I'm the meteorologist at WBTV. I've been here for 33 and a third years, and I am going to retire uh, in about five days from this recording. I've got flashcards here, and I have really no idea what to expect, but I think that we're going to be seeing some flashbacks of my 33 years. So the first one here is, aha, okay. So this picture here is the introduction. Uh, this was the, uh, we had a newsletter back back in the 1980s and the 1990s, and so this, this was the newsletter announcing my arrival. And what's interesting about this is, and this is in no way, shape, or form bragging or anything like that, it just happens to be dumb luck, but I happened to end up being the right time at the right place. I was the very first meteorologist with a four-year degree in Bachelor of Science to not only be a meteorologist at WBTV, but I was the first degree meteorologist in the entire Charlotte television market uh, to have a degree in meteorology. And it was interesting because uh, Charlotte was like way behind in terms of hiring meteorologists for the, for the local news, way behind. I mean, I worked in two teeny tiny small TV stations before I came here, and it was in Steubenville, Ohio, and we had a full-blown operational meteorological department there, and then I worked in a small station in Monroe, Louisiana. I was KNOE down there, and again, I was, I don't know, fourth, fifth, sixth, who knows how many were ahead of me there. So to come up to Charlotte, North Carolina and be the first meteorologist on television up here was shocking to me. So again, in no way, shape, or form is that bragging, that just happens to be the way it worked out. But uh, yeah, I looked a little bit younger there. So number two, here we go. Oh, here we are. So now, uh, this is not long after I got here, actually. And uh, boy, what is that, an IBM 386, uh, DX386, or I don't know what, what we're looking at there. That was the most difficult radar system I've ever used. You had to use this uh, IBM DOS computer to uh, configure the, uh, the radar system back then. That, that thing was a bear. And I do remember that big map up on the wall. Uh, we would actually get the data in, a, in printed text form, like for tornado watches and things like that. And it would tell us what the latitude and the longitude of, what, of the tornado watches were and, and where they were with respect to you know, the two endpoints. And then we would actually draw these parallelograms on this big map with our um, magic markers and the uh, Sharpies, that's the word I was trying to think of, uh, in order to plot out the weather. That was way back before you know, we had all these computers that were just uh, you know, helping us as much as they do now. And so, yes, what you don't see in this picture is on the right-hand side, it was an entire wall just loaded up with, with weather charts. Um, and so there's that. So, yeah, good, good memory there. Uh, that's probably back from the early 90s uh, or late 80s. All right, let's see. Oh, okay. All right, now, now we're getting funny here. Uh, <laughs> that was my Burt Reynolds days. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so there's Eric uh, with the 80s mustache. Um, and, of course, trying to look cool. Uh, at the same time. So uh, got a little little hair lock there hanging down over the forehead, but um, yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe uh, um, maybe I need to reconsider this and, and, and grow that back or maybe even get the goatee going with it too. But All right, next. Um, ah, yeah, school visit. Uh, I actually know where this is. I think this is Lansdowne Elementary School. You know, this is one of the things that, you know, everybody's been so, you know, really overwhelmingly flattering uh, to me and talking about all the things that you know we've been able to accomplish here over the 33 years but one thing that's kind of flown under the radar a little bit were all the school visits that we uh, used to do um, and back in the early days we uh, we used to fly out to these schools in the helicopter and and I mean we would be coming in and landing you know in the baseball field or the football field on this helicopter and all the kids would be outside watching this thing come in I mean it was just a spectacle uh, and I didn't, you know, I used to not refer to these as, as weather talks. I would refer to them as weather concerts because that's how whipped up we got these kids. They're totally whipped up in a frenzy. I mean, can you imagine that? You know, you're in third grade and helicopters coming down, you know, in your, in your field. Now, funny story uh, with this, maybe the funniest story of all of the 33 years I've been here, but we could not find the school. We were up in the helicopter buzzing around. We were looking for Caldwell Middle School, I think, or something like that. We were way up around Lenore. Could not find the school. Could not find the school. And my helicopter pilot finally said, we're going to have to ask directions. I'm like, well, we're 3,000 feet in the atmosphere. Uh, who are we asking here? And the helicopter said, give me one minute. And so he puts this helicopter down, and we come down, and we land 
on the sixth fairway of a golf course up there in Caldwell County. And of course, I'm looking down and there's a guy hitting out of the sand trap. And he's looking up at us and going, what in God's name is going on? And, uh, but yeah, we landed right there on the golf course and he said, okay, get out and ask directions. And so I hopped out of the helicopter, walked over to the guy and asked him where Caldwell Middle School was. He said, we're lost. And he told us and, uh, and off we went, we found it. But you know that those guys, look, if I'm talking about it 30, 30 years later, you know that that story is still being told to their grandkids. So school visits were fun, no, no doubt about it. And um, uh, I hope we helped a lot of people, um, you, you know, learn how to be safe with, with dangerous weather. Okay, man, Matt is really pulling out all the stops now. I could talk about this picture for an hour, uh, but I know we don't have that much time. So I'm going to try to give you the short version. Um, I wanted to be an airline pilot. That's why I had a degree in meteorology. And what happened was, is everything worked out perfectly. I got my degree and I, I was accepted into Aviation Officer Candidate School in uh, Pensacola, Florida, into the United States Navy to be a pilot. So that was the, the grand plan. I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to go into the Navy. I'm going to get my, uh, I'm going to get through, you know, AOCS and I'm going to be an officer and we're, I'm going to be a, a fighter pilot. Well, I failed the physical. Um, which a lot of people do. Usually it's their eyes, but I had a defective eustachian tube and I could not equalize my ears. You got to learn how to pop your ears if you're going up and down in the atmosphere. And I had a defective eustachian tube, could not pop my ears, and they said, thanks for your interest in the U.S. Navy. Goodbye. You're going back home. And so now I'm home without, with, a, with a crushed dream and uh, I'm thinking, okay, but I do have this degree in meteorology. What am I going to do? So I thought, well, let me go back up to Penn State and I'll go into grad school and get a graduate degree in meteorology. Well, that lasted about a week. Um, I just realized I can't sit in a classroom anymore. And so I joined a rock band. Uh, that's right. So I went from being a meteorologist to an airline pilot to a, a rock drummer. This is my band. Uh, and in case you're wondering, I've given you plenty of time. That is Eric Thomas. Now there is the goatee there. That was Chris, our bass player. Scott, our lead singer, who was an incredible singer for, uh, he, he, we could have been a tribute band for The Doors. Uh, he sounded just like Jim Morrison, uh, for people who are old enough who know what I'm talking about. And um, this, you know, let's see, Chris, Eric, Scott, this is Bob Churchill, who was our guitarist. Um, and so we named our band, this was Scott Ott, and we named our band the Scott Ott Band but we called ourselves SOB for short. And so that's how we kind of were known as SOB. So there you go. Here's the story of Eric's rock band days. All right, oh, here we go. Now, now, now I'm getting a little bit less awkward again here. Uh, this is my, I have three kids, so I'll go through these here. Um, this is Victoria, uh, that's me. And this, I'm sorry, that's Emily. I don't have my glasses on. That's Emily, that's Victoria. This is my lovely wife, Vicki, and this is my eldest child, my son, Tyler, who was married a couple years ago to his beautiful wife, Jenny, uh, and they just now had my very first grandchild, uh, born two months ago, September 9th, Flynn Lewis, and uh, so that's another thing that I'm looking forward to in my retirement years uh, is being a grandfather. So I am now a grandfather, uh, and it's been an unbelievable blessing. Uh, my family has been uh, just an unbelievable support for me. I mean, I'm supposed to be the guy raising them, but uh, you know, they put up with all these wacky hours that TV were, will give us over all these years, and um, I'm just glad that we survived it. Um, yeah, great, great picture. Tyler and Jenny, congratulations again. All right, what's next? Uh, well, right on cue, there is Flynn Lewis, my first grandchild. Uh, born, as I say, September 9th, and he's wonderful, and he's, I can't believe how much he's changed even since this picture already. They live up in Raleigh, so I don't get to see him as often as I'd like, and they're still being very careful with the pandemic, um, and so they're not running around bringing him back and forth to Charlotte much yet. They are coming in for Christmas, though, so that will be our first visit with Flynn Lewis and uh, the whole family there for, for Christmas here in just a few days. Wow, this is, this is close to my very, very first show on, on, on television. I grew up in Pittsburgh, and I um, did an, an, an unpaid internship uh, here. This is after the rock band flamed out, by the way. So, so that I, and I knew at some point I, I had to sort of cut out the nonsense and get serious again before uh, my, my degree in meteorology fell so far behind um, that, that nobody would take me seriously anymore. So I was so lucky. I did an internship here at the TV station. And next thing I knew, I had these opportunities to go on the air and I got my chance and then they hired me to do weekends and um, it was an unbelievable 
string of things that happened in my favor. And um, so there, and by the way, I think that's a clip-on tie too. I should admit that, but um, so yeah. And we, those are still magnet uh, temperatures. So we had to still put our magnets up on the board uh, behind me. And so th this goes all the way back. This is 1983. So we're looking at 38 years ago here with that. Oh boy, yeah, lots of memories. Man, what's next? All right, here we go. Two to go, I think. Wow, uh, um, this is our TV station, and uh, I, I think what's even more interesting, you know, it really hasn't changed that much in terms of the overall building. The parking lot looks pretty much the same. I don't know how well you can see this picture, but what you might want to notice is Charlotte back there. I think there's like one building that's taller than the trees. Uh, now, this predates me, because I know we never had that sign. I think that probably says Jefferson Pilot Standard or something there. Here we go, final one. Yeah, my buddy, all right, this is a great way to end it there. Al Conklin. Hey, you know, I've been here for 33 years. When they moved me up to chief meteorologist, and um, they moved me up to chief meteorologist in 1993, and then so they needed somebody for mornings, so they brought in Al Conklin. And Al's been here for 29 years, and boy, I'll tell you what, he has been steadfast, he has been loyal, and he has patiently waited his turn, if you will, although he's never uh, made me feel like I'm in the way. Um, and we've been a great team, and I could not be any prouder to be handing off the torch to, to this guy who's been here for 29 years. Uh, I don't know what else you can say other than the fact that he's just demonstrated how, how much this, this region means to him, how much the people mean to him. And um, again, the loyalty that he has shown, not just WBTV, but this entire region is second to none. And so for 29 years, uh, Al has been here uh, serving the public dutifully. We're not gonna miss a step with meteorologist Al Conklin coming in as chief meteorologist here from 2022 going forward. And he's also going to be leading a team of elite meteorologists now uh, who are going to be covering all the other day parts as well as the weekends. And so, uh, folks, you're in good hands. Meteorologist Al Conklin, chief meteorologist, and I just want to say thank you all uh, for your support, for inviting me into your home every night and trusting me with the important information that we know that you're expecting. God bless you all and have a fantastic 2022 and beyond. Thank you.